Hello and welcome to our webcast, Latin America, Stanford Graduate School of Business and Beyond. My name is Michael Morley and I'm a second year MBA student here at the GSB. I'm joined today by Luisa Bet, originally from Brazil, and Gabriel Elizondo, who is from Chile. Hola a todos. Uh, like me, they're second year MBA students and we will all graduate this June. Um, today we'll be talking about the student experience here on campus and answer as many of your questions as we can, including those who have submitted questions in advance. Um, we won't be talking about the admission process or the application or financial aid. You can probably find the answers to those questions on the Stanford MBA website. To submit a question during the webcast, um, you can uh, just click on the chat icon at the top of your screen, uh, enter your question in the chat window, and click send to all panelists. And finally, you can make the video full screen by clicking on the arrow icon on the right side of the video window. So let's begin with some introductions. Luisa and Gabriel, um, maybe you could start by telling us a little bit more about yourselves and specifically what you were doing before the GSB and what you think about doing after the GSB. So would you like to kick us off? Thanks, Michael. Well, I was uh, born and raised in, in Chile. I got my degree in industrial engineering and then a master's in uh, management science. And actually, I was super passionate about business things even before getting into college. Uh, so actually, during college, I founded my first company. Uh, it was in the electronic market industry. I had a great time. It was challenging being a student. Uh, but then I, I discovered my passion about entrepreneurship. And thereafter, I spent five years uh, working in the same industry, but as a consultant and C-level executive. So coming to Stanford for me was pretty much following my dream about entrepreneurship. And my plan after is to actually uh, work at a startup, uh, probably in the growth of function, and uh, in the midterm, starting my own company. Okay. Uh, so my name is Luisa. I was born and raised in Brazil, Sao Paulo. Uh, before the GSB, I did some years working in management consulting for E.T. Kearney, focusing on consumer goods. But that was not where my passion is. I've always loved like entrepreneurship and always thought about that as a a potential career. So I left uh, consulting and I joined a fashion e-commerce in Brazil called Oluki. And I worked there for one and a half years. But uh, And I knew that entrepreneurship was something very important to me. But I also knew that I wanted to do something that was uh, like a fashion that I have. And although I really like fashion, my heart was never there. So I decided to apply to Stanford. And I came here knowing that I wanted to do something entrepreneurial and I wanted to find something of passion that I could follow on. And Stanford has been great in helping me in that entrepreneurship journey. And after the GSB, I am looking to start something in Brazil or to join like a startup also in Brazil. Great. Uh, and maybe I'll finish up. So my name is Michael Morley. I'm moderating the discussion today. Um, and actually I'm from Chicago in the United States originally. But uh, my main interest is in healthcare. I'm a biomedical engineer. And I've always been fascinated in Latin America ever since I was a, a little kid. I grew up watching soap operas and telenovelas. So <laughs> I actually did a, a master's degree in Bogota, Colombia at La Universidad de los Andes, uh, at which point I worked uh, designing prosthetics, uh, prosthetic limbs for my master's thesis. And also ended up acting in a, in a telenovela in Colombia. Uh, but uh, since then, I've really just been very interested in the healthcare market in Latin America. I came to the GSB because after working a lot as an engineer, I wanted to understand more healthcare systems. And after the GSB, I'm going to be working for McKinsey Consulting in healthcare um, consulting, uh, hopefully with a focus on Latin America. So maybe we can go to some of the questions that were submitted in advance. And, and please remember, throughout the webcast, feel free to click on the chat icon and submit some questions as we go. Um, but to kick us off, we received many questions about why each of us applied to Stanford and why we chose to go here instead of other schools, including some of those schools in our home countries. So maybe, Gabrielle, could you kind of show your ideas on, on choosing Stanford and coming here? Sure. Um, there's one example that summarizes uh, why I chose Stanford. The first day of classes, we had the, that workshop with the Dean of Admission. And he, like, gave us a lot of facts and stats about our class. And he used one phrase that really changed the, the way I see Stanford. He said, being at Stanford is like being in Venice during the Renaissance. And actually, that summarized what is to be here. We are in the place where the future is being reshaped 
this is a place where entrepreneurs are dreaming uh, how we're going to conceive the future of the world. And being here, actually, it's, it's a privilege. Uh, I cannot describe how incredible is this experience. Uh, I just invite you to come here. <laughs> uh, so I completely agree with what Gabriel said. I really feel like this is this place is the venison. It's Venice during the Renaissance. I think it's it's a great definition. Uh, so for me coming here, this was definitely an important factor. Being close to like exposed to new ideas, exposed to new ways of thinking. But there is a second factor that was very important for me, which is the strength that Stanford has in developing soft skills. So for me, like. As someone who wants to be an entrepreneur in the future, I think learning how to like to communicate better with people, how to understand people, how to become a better leader is very important. And Stanford has a really uh, comprehensive curriculum in helping you develop those soft skills. So for me, that was also very important in deciding why Stanford. Yeah. Well, and this is uh, I think kind of related, but another question that we got was really how has Stanford helped you uh, get closer to achieving your career goals and and uh, specifically in terms of returning to Latin America or your your future work there? Um, I see myself as an entrepreneur taking a sabbatical. Uh, <laughs> so I stopped being an entrepreneur. I have been like helping other entrepreneurs, but I want to come back sooner or later. Uh, and as Luisa was saying, uh, Stanford uh, gave me something that really surprised me and I have helped me to achieve my federal goal, which is developing leadership skills. In the past, I took a bunch of classes doing undergrad, master's degree, and never had the actually experience that I had here. Um, they they tell us since day one uh, how important it is to be self-aware, and I didn't understand it until I took those classes about leadership. And I think uh, through this process, I have discovered so much about who I am and who I want to be. And I think this journey, it's impossible to describe, but I have to tell. It's been the best two years of my life in terms of developing skills associated with leading people and getting to know myself. That, for sure, is going to make a huge difference for my future. Yeah. So for me, uh, I agree. The same with Gabriel. I think my life, I've totally increased my self-awareness and uh, be, I hope I'm becoming a better leader. But for me, what I think in terms of my career is how much I've been exposed to new ideas. So. Uh, that comes to one, like the speakers who come to campus. So it's, we are very privileged here. Like every lunch, there is like someone who's doing a startup, someone who did something really amazing, and they dedicate their time and come and talk to us. So it really helps like increase my idea. So I was, I lived in Brazil almost my life. So I only had that view of the world, and I think here it's really like having access to those people, those ideas is expanding my horizons and the way I see the world. So that's one thing. The other thing is how close we are to the Silicon Valley. So I've seen like a few startups who I thought were interesting business ideas that I could potentially take them to Brazil. So it's very easy to send an email and say, hi, my name is Luisa, I'm currently a student at the GSB. I uh, would love to learn more about your company because of this and this. And people will most of the time respond to you and you can definitely get a call with them and understand more about your company and really think about like business models that I could bring back to Brazil. And the third thing for me is the classes. So I've taken a, a few classes related to entrepreneurship and uh, one in particular that's called Startup Garage that has been like a, an incredible journey in learning about the design thinking method and I actually did choose a problem uh, in Brazil which is related to obesity and diabetes. So it, it's been great to leverage all the knowledge and all the resources that Stanford has to develop an idea that I could, that I could potentially bring back to Brazil. So to summarize, I think it really uh, helped me open up my view of the world and see new possibilities. And now I'm going back to Brazil and definitely going to explore like the viability of some of those ideas back home. That's great. Um, I know a lot of the prospective students watching right now have been curious also about what has it been like transitioning from Chile or from Brazil <laughs> to the U.S.? Um, what did you find was challenging? Yeah. <laughs> challenging what surprised you? Uh, keeping in mind that Silicon Valley is really a <laughs> micro environment of, of the greater U.S. So, so what were some things that surprised you, Gabriel, from moving here? Uh, well, first of all, yeah, I have to acknowledge the last point. Uh, this is like a paradise. Uh, the Silicon Valley is just amazing. So I don't know how I can uh, correlate this with like, every place in the U.S. But talking about our experience, uh, it's been amazing. Uh, obviously, our culture, 
like and the education style is different, uh, but it's getting to um, getting adapted to this is way easier than we, we might think. Um, and actually, I think the GSB does something really good, which is during the first week and then the first quarter, they invest a lot of time and resources helping us to have a soft landing. So we have all these dinners and uh, workshops and activities to get to know people, to understand better the American culture, and to understand better how to embrace the education here. So for example, in, in my home country, in Chile, uh, if you speak up too much in class, that's like kind of off. Here it's mandatory. <laughs> you have to speak a lot all the time. So, for example, if you're like you know more shy or you're not uh, used to you know speaking English all the time, they help you out. They have you know workshops for that. So, no matter how outgoing or introvert you are, how much you feel comfortable speaking in English or not, they're gonna help us out. And everyone after the first quarter is like, okay, I can do this. And so, so actually, this process of, of getting. Uh, you know, adapted to the American culture, for me, has been a great journey. And actually, um, I think actually I'm going to stay in the U.S. for a couple of years. So that's a good <laughs> example of how good was this process. Yeah. So for me, I must say it, was, it wasn't so easy to adapt to the, to the first course here at the GSB. Uh, I, for me, it was hard, like, in the beginning to get used to the way the classes are structured uh, in Brazil and in my university. Uh, participation was very different. I could speak English, but still I didn't feel 100% as comfortable as I would feel in Portuguese. So it wasn't very easy, but I think uh, Stanford did so many things to help. Uh, first, I think there's the community. Everyone is super supportive. I remember I had like a few American friends. They would offer to help like prepare with me for the classes. And that just helped me be much more confident once I was in class to actually raise my hand and participate. And just the whole way that the program is structured. So they have a period that uh, you cannot do recruiting, you only focus on your academics. And that was really important to me because I came here, I had this cultural shock, I had the support from my community, and I also had some sort of protection before like all the recruiting and clubs yeah. start to actually land well and be prepared. Yeah. Well, building off that, maybe we'll start with Louisa first on this one. Um, so what sorts of resources, clubs, or groups are there for Latin American students at the GSB? And maybe you can share a couple of the events or things that they do each year on campus. Okay, so the first and black club you can ever join is LATA, which is the Latin American Student Association Club, which I was one of the co-presidents. And what we did is, of course, we did a lot of parties a lot of barbecues, but of course we also did like the uh, professional events. So we would make sure that we would uh, bring uh, important speakers from Latin America to speak to us on campus. Every time there is someone important from Latin America here, we would do a small gathering with students. So for example, we had Marcos Galperin from Mercado Libre and we had like a breakfast with him. We had uh, Beto Cicupira from 3G Capital and we organized a lunch with him. So it was a very good combination between uh, having fun and getting to know all your Latin friends here at the GSB, but also like making sure that we are like developing and letting people uh, look to Latin America from a more business perspective. Yeah. you have anything else to add? <laughs> well, first of all, lots of ice this. <laughs> uh, I have so many asados within, I cannot <laughs> actually count them. Uh, but actually, I wanted, to, I wanted to add two points. One, actually, Lassa really does a great job. I remember actually my first contact with them was when I was an admin and they sent me a PDF with this, you know, handbook, like this is how you should get into Stanford GSP, like for Latin Americans. So it's like a bunch of advice. It's like, okay, this is how you get a bank account, mm -hmm. a mobile, and all those tips of for like foreign is kind of hard to get and really helped me a lot. And the second point is like we have we also have more clubs, uh, not only at Stanford UCB but also at, across Stanford University. Mm -hmm. So there's like you know Stanford Chile Club, Stanford Peru yeah. Club, Stanford Brazil Club. I'm actually uh, the president of the Stanford Chile Club. We host a lot of asados, you know, barbecue parties too. To Hascarias. Exactly. <laughs> also with, with the Brazilians. So. I think the life for Latinos uh, at, at the GSB and across Stanford University is great. You're going to meet a lot of people. You have a lot of support. And the most important part is like it's not something designed only for having fun. It's like a complete you know package. It's like you know uh, networks for future jobs. You know academics uh, and also obviously social life. So it's it's great to be a Latino here. Yeah. 
Um, so thanks to everyone who has submitted questions via the chat so far. Um, we'll get to those in just a moment. Um, but first, we're just going to answer, answer a few more of the questions that have already been submitted. So please keep sending in your questions. We are reviewing them. And I hope you're enjoying the discussion so far. So uh, changing gears a little bit, uh, another question that we have up is, in what ways has the diversity of your classmates um, contributed to the development of your ideas and plans for the future? Um, maybe both in terms of diversity of where they're from geographically, but I think also their professional experience in the past. So do you want to kick us off? Sure. Um, I think uh, I have great expectation of having, you know, outstanding classes like you guys. Uh, but actually, just they surprised me. Uh, as an example, like I remember I went swimming once and I was, you know, with this classmate and he just kicked my ass. And I was like, <laughs> how can you be so fast? Well, he was an Olympian in the American team. So it's like, oh, God. One from one guy from the Olympics, and then I had dinner with a, with a classman. He was a 25 years old entrepreneur who got acquired for 20 million dollars before the GSP. And then you start discovering that each one of your classmates has such a great experience that you learn even more from them than from your courses. And actually, courses are great, but what you learn from your classmates is just unique. And you have people from every industry, every function, and pretty much every country of the world. And having this globalized, diverse, and exceptional uh, group of people uh, available for you all the time is just a privilege. And I actually, I think being with this group of people is one of the best part of the, of the GSP. Mm -hmm. So for me, I have two takes on that. The first is, I think, uh, at least for me, uh, uh, growing up in Brazil, I think I've uh, somehow uh, shared all my life with similar people. And here at the GSB, it's so diverse. So we have people from the military, people from India, people from China, people who work in like social business, people who work in private equity. And it's very diverse and it gives me such a bigger range of views than I was used to. So it just like builds on to what it's like, what's the thing that I came to the MBA looking most forward to, which is to like open up my mind to new ideas and to new things that happen in the world. So that has been definitely a very important point. Uh, and the second one is actually something that Carlos Brito, uh, the current CEO of AB Math, he mentioned in one of his talks here at Stanford, that he said that what he got the most out of his classmates was that like they raised the bar for yeah. him. What he mentioned about in his talk is how much as like a company and as a person, you should just like, like once you're like you're here, you need to find like, you need to try to go better, go to the next step, and then work to close the gap. And what he said is like all his classmates open up a gap for him, and now he has a much bigger bar in everything that he's doing, and he's working constantly to like meet that bar. So in every like every aspect, he will look, and there will be someone who will be outstanding in that. So it's always remembering him that he needs to push himself, and that he can always do better. So I think for me, all my classmates, they have like set the bar really high in so many dimensions for me that I'm always going to continue like trying to be better and trying to. Close the gap, I think, probably forever. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, probably building on that, just one last thing I'd say is not only is there obviously this diverse expertise uh, from all the students here, but also I think Stanford has a very collaborative culture. And so, you know, when you're when you're coming into the GSP and you're thinking of changing careers, which I think a lot of people doing the full time MBA program are, um, you know, you're curious in management consulting, and it's so easy just to grab a coffee. And in fact, a lot yeah. of times people will volunteer to say. <laughs> hey, I just worked three years in private equity or management consulting, and I'm happy to talk to you about that. What does that look like? And um, at least for me, coming as a biomedical engineer with kind of very little back business background, the thing that I think surprised me even more so than the diversity of the classmates was just how open they are at the GSB yeah. of providing career advice and connections and help with yeah. everything. So, um, so moving to another question. Um, are there any examples of how the business skills being taught at the GSB um, are being used to develop businesses in Latin America? So I guess to specify that a little bit more, um, what are kind of some of the key themes, maybe Gabrielle, that you've seen in some of your classes that you see are directly applicable maybe to the startup ecosystem in, in Chile? Um, maybe the, the words I'm going to use does not sound like business skills, but I think we're all going to get the idea. I think the first one is related with, you know, trying to uh, strive for excellence. I think uh, in our cultures, uh, we have, you know, this benchmark of like doing things great, but coming here, 
as you were saying, show you a new way of being better. Like the benchmark is so high that you strive to actually become a better leader and then you strive for better organizations. And the second point that is related with this, which is having exposure to these amazing people, you know, uh, our professors, the guest speakers, your classmates, uh, start in, in every one of us this idea of like, I can dream bigger. I can strive mm -hmm. for not like a regional market, not like a startup aimed to disrupt Chile or maybe the Southern Cone or South America. I want to start a company that's going to change the world. And that like crazy dream might sound crazy in our home countries, but here is like the basic. No one aims to address a small market anymore. We have this passion for like something global, and I think that's something great that we can apply in Latin America. We have talented people, we have resources, we, we have ideas, but sometimes we don't aim for the greatest. And I think applying that to Latin America will change the way Latin America will grow in the future. Yeah. What do you think? So, this is a tough question to answer for Latin America. So I'm gonna I'm gonna answer uh, how I think I like one of the business skills that was most important, and I think can help anyone doing business. And not only in, I hope a lot of people apply that in Latin America, but that applies to business in general. So for me, I think what what really like the best business skills I've learned here is judgment. So how can you make uh, better decisions? I don't. Uh, I think we learn about accounting, we learn about economy, we learn about soft skills, we learn about the failures and the successes of a lot of entrepreneurs. But in the end, I think what we are learning is how to make better judgment mm -hmm. and how to make better decisions. And I think that's the ultimate goal of anyone who is making business is the ability to make better decisions. So for me, uh, I definitely hope that once I am in those tough situations and I have to make difficult decisions that I will remember uh, the examples of like uh, when I was in Stanford that professor told me that or I have that classmate who went to a similar situation and I hope that remembering those experiences will help me take better judgments at those times. Yeah, yeah and maybe tying um, the GSB to Latin America a little bit I'd also say that um, as part of the MBA requirement every student has to do what's called a global study mm -hmm. trip um, and so these are these are study trips that are organized by MBA twos um, to different countries with an educational component to them, a theme. And so, kind of very selfishly, um, Louise and I actually <laughs> just came back from organizing a trip to look at Brazil's healthcare and education systems and the impact that those have on um, on economic growth and development in Brazil. And uh, and you just came back from Chile, where yeah. you happened to make it rain in the Atacama Desert. Um, <laughs> and so what, what were some of the themes that, that you were exploring in Chile with the group from Chile? Well, actually, the, the topic of the, of the trip was the yeah. Chilecon Valley, reality of me. So actually, <laughs> super related with this, which is like we were trying to use our Stanford lens to see what's happening in entrepreneurship in Chile and how we can build a better ecosystem for entrepreneurs. What's like great experience mm -hmm. with some accidents, you know, in Calama with the yeah. storm, but everything went fine. Yeah, yeah. And if I can just, just add to that, I think this is some like the GSD that Michael was mentioning and this intern, like Stanford has a whole program towards like exposing students to international experience uh, through the SAP program, to the GMIX. I think it's something very valuable. So I've been to two GSDs, one to Kenya, one to Israel, and now I've led one to Brazil. And it has really been like an amazing experience to learn like from those countries in a very different way that had I gone on vacation with my friends to Kenya or to Israel. So it was definitely like a very eye-opening experience to show me like other countries, how things work, for example, like the whole like, like entrepreneurial ecosystem in Israel, that is something very special and how like all the international experiences you have at the GSD, it's, it's it's something for me, I don't know for you, Gabriel, but it was definitely something that I really enjoyed. Oh yeah, for me it was amazing too. I probably, I cannot explain the details because this will be too long, but <laughs> I went to Nepal to hike through the Himalayas to understand how those communities are growing in the middle of like nowhere. Mm -hmm. So it was an amazing experience. Yeah. Yeah. Um, so another question which a lot of people seem to be interested in is, you know, we've mentioned Silicon Valley a few times, um, but what makes Stanford so renowned for entrepreneurship? It seems like actually yeah. all of us are, are kind of considering futures in, in, in entrepreneurship. So, so what makes Stanford so special? 
Uh, well, I can start, I think, by pointing at three things. Uh, I think one is obviously location. I think we are at the heart of Silicon Valley. But the second is the most important one. We have been, like, at Stanford has, has been training generation of, like, incredible people for, like, more than 100 years. And this is actually the main source of why we are so famous in entrepreneurship, because the founders of, like, so many companies came here. And why? The third point is because Stanford has this unique educational uh, program that develops this entrepreneurial mindset in pretty much every one of our students. If you come to DSB, actually everyone talks about entrepreneurship, but actually across Stanford, like if you go to computer science, if you go to electrical engineering, everyone talks about entrepreneurship. And actually that's really surprising because from my, my own experience, like in undergrad, I was an engineer too, Entrepreneurship was not something like hot back yeah. back then, but at Stanford, it's like the basics. Like somehow you're gonna be working for a startup, you're gonna start uh, a startup, or you're gonna invest in a startup. So yeah. everything is about entrepreneurship, and I think uh, this is not something that that's going to be just for a couple of years. I think Stanford will remain being the capital of entrepreneurship of the world mm -hmm. for several several uh, centuries. Yeah. I have a slightly different take on that, and for me, uh, I think Stanford is famous for innovation, and I think entrepreneurship is like one part mm. of innovation, and Stanford is extremely strong and very focused on that, as Gabrielle was saying. But I think here in Stanford, we see innovation throughout several different aspects. For example, uh, there's a lot of innovation that can happen in the social segment. There's even, in my opinion, a lot of innovation that can happen in most, like more traditional jobs, such as consulting, banking, or like large corporations. And I think that's what really Stanford tries to plant the seeds in the mind of students, that they can innovate and be, if, you, if I may say so, entrepreneur in anything that they are doing. So for me, that's what the heart of Stanford is. So. Uh, I know entrepreneurship is not for everyone, and definitely there's many more opportunities you can find at Stanford than just to become an entrepreneur. But I would say that a common theme among that is innovation, and that comes to any potential field of work from anyone, even like politics or government. I think that involves a lot of innovation. Too. Yeah, yeah, I'm, I'm happy that you brought that up, Louisa, because I, I, I think you're right. I think that it's more innovation and thinking creatively yes. to problem solve. Um, and I wouldn't want people to think that if they're coming here, yeah. they have to become startup entrepreneurs. Uh, because in fact, I think of the outgoing classes that goes through, only less than about a fifth of them actually do go into startups or entrepreneurship. Mm -hmm. So most of it, coming back to leadership perspective, is how do you change organizations from within, whether they be 10 employees, 100 employees, 1,000 employees, or, or larger. Mm -hmm. So um, one last thing that I would tag on is, um, uh, some people might not be as familiar with the area with, with Stanford and Silicon Valley um, as those that are living here, but just to give you a feel, um, you know, the headquarters of Google, the headquarters of Facebook, the headquarters of Apple, um, the headquarters of uh, Netflix um, are all within about 10, 15 miles of campus. And when Luisa mentioned before, it's actually an incredible um, atmosphere because during lunch hours, is almost always what we call BBLs, which are brown bag lunches. Um, and those are when uh, guests from industry or invited people will come and give a presentation on what, what is this company doing that's really innovative right now, kind of talk, showcasing some of their most exciting projects um, that a lot of students will go to in between classes. So you can really get a good pulse on what are some of the most innovative companies doing uh, throughout the U.S. And even a lot of the larger companies, say Walmart, for example, have innovation labs in Silicon Valley just because it's really where the ecosystem is. Mm -hmm. um, and so even the more established companies also have their kind of their innovative uh, research labs in, in, in the area as well. So um, maybe thinking more about the decision of, of pursuing an MBA. So how did each of you feel or know that it was the right time to pursue an MBA? So Gabriel, do you want to kick us off with that one? Sure. Um, like being completely honest, I thought about getting an MBA when I was actually finishing my undergrad. The problem was how to get in, <laughs> <laughs> which is not an, an easy challenge. Uh, so I thought, okay, I need experience, and I need to, you know, prepare myself for the application because, it, as you guys know, it's a lot of work. So after ga gaining some experience, I thought, okay, when am I going to apply? I need to study for, you know, English uh, test, uh, GMAT, and everything else. 
So for me, actually, it was like kind of the alignment of everything. I got a job where they supported my application. They said, okay, take your time, prepare yourself. We're going to, you know, endorse you for your application. So like being like super pragmatic, uh, despite the fact I wanted to apply early on, I think I had to find the right time where I had experience, when I had experience and also the time to plan everything and, you know, write all the essays and everything which is related with the application process. Yeah, I think it's, it's, I think this is a really hard question, when is the right time to apply? I think it really comes down to an individual decision. Uh, there's so many factors involved and it's like your personal life, when are you going to have time to prepare for the process, and where do you stand in your professional life, and what's your, like, what's your, or like, what do you look forward in your professional life? So it's really hard to say what's the right time to apply. Uh, speaking for myself, I knew, like, uh, after working, like, for four years in consulting, and after one and a half years working in a fashion startup, I felt that I was, like, that I had completed a cycle in my professional life that I wanted, like, to take a break and really, uh, like looking to what is out there, I I felt like I've learned a lot in those two jobs, and I was ready to move on to the next step. And coming to business school was the perfect timing for that. For me, those two reasons I mentioned before that made me apply to Stanford, which is like to like explore new ideas and to really develop myself from like a leadership perspective. So that was like the reason that made sense for me in that time. But I really think it's a very personal decision, and everyone should think about like all the a lot of moving parts we have in our lives before making a decision to apply to the MBA. Yeah. Um, and so another question we have uh, that someone submitted is, um, how has the experience of being a Stanford MBA student been different than what you expected? <laughs> um, so we, we first spoke about kind of what surprised you, I guess, of yeah. moving to the, uh, the U.S., so perhaps more specifically mm -hmm. about starting at Stanford as a student. What, what kind of surprised you when you first started here, Gabrielle? Um, I think, uh, as an example, uh, the day I went to class and the professor was Eric Schmidt, the chairman of Google, and that was like normal. Uh, <laughs> that made me realize, okay, this is the place where you actually you have outstanding speakers and professors and classmates again all the time, and at some point you just get used to it. Uh, when we start the first quarter, there's like these PBLs, and we try to attend every one of them because amazing people are coming to Stanford GSP. And then you realize, okay, you have so many, you need to focus. And actually that really helped me because I don't know if it's, this is social engineering or yeah. not, but they give you so many options like for classes, speakers, trips, jobs. At some point you need to focus. And I think mm -hmm. that training has been amazing because now I have a pretty narrow idea of like, I want to do this and this is what really matters to me. Mm -hmm. And the second part is related with uh, kind of my conception of entrepreneurship. I think in the past I was more about like, you know, creating companies. But now I think this entrepreneurial mindset is more about understanding that um, someone, a competitor, a startup, a big company, whatever, might change or might disappear because there's like new companies starting new ideas all the time. Yeah. I think before coming to GSP, I had this idea of like, you know, small companies become maybe medium-sized companies and large companies will dominate all the time. Now it's like that's not true anymore. And I think no matter what you do, being a consultant, being an entrepreneur, an investor, being aware of how dynamics are being reshaped, it's actually something that really yeah. changed the way you conduct your professional career. Yeah, so I think for me, uh, like, as a student at the GSP, I completely agree with what Gabriel said. It's an overwhelming, uh, like, amount of choices you can get. If I could change one thing about the GSP, I'll mm -hmm. make the days be 30 hours longer. So <laughs> 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 me, I can't do that. So I think definitely, like, learning to prioritize is very important. And for me, uh, it was, uh, especially in the first two quarters, uh, the classes were, like, I had to study, uh, I think people don't usually don't talk yeah. about this very much, but I, I did have to put a lot of effort into mm -hmm. the beginning to really get used to class. Uh, as First of all, I had, like, a language barrier that I had to get used to, so naturally it took me longer to do the readings. I felt like I need to prepare more for classes than, like, people who were native speakers in English. So that was one thing I maybe wasn't expecting. Uh, and the classes have been, I mean, not all classes are 
like super wonderful, but I would say that I really enjoy the classes I've had so far. And once you get used to how the system works, I think I was able to manage my time better. Yeah. Yeah, I'm happy you brought that up because even as a native English speaker, uh, I think coming from engineering school, I always thought that I studied more than other people. And people said, oh, you know, business school will be a two-year vacation and you'll enjoy it. And don't get me wrong, I've really enjoyed it, but I was just amazed at the amount of reading and, and cases. And really, uh, they, they keep you extremely busy. Um, so, yeah, you want to? So I just like want to comment that. Uh, one thing that's very fascinating about like business school is that you have a freedom to make your own experience. Yeah. So combining like uh, you can really like if you ask probably like we have 400 roughly 400 people in our class. So I would say if you ask each one of them uh, like how was their experience, probably each one would have a very different answer. So it's really like how you combine all the pieces of all that. Uh, huge amount of opportunities you have and what you want to make. So it's hard to say, like some people might think it's more of a vacation time. Some people might take it more seriously into the academic. So I think Stanford offers you all the possibilities that you can choose what kind of experience you want to make. Yeah. Um, building off of the experience and opportunities, let's, let's talk about um, what are some of the resources available to us at the GSB to help us find a job, um, let's say during the summer internship between the two years and also post-graduation. So um, do you want to kick us off on, on that one? Sure. Actually, uh, that's another surprise for the GSB. Yeah. Uh, for me, like uh, searching for a job uh, doing undergrad or my master's degree was pretty much maybe someone sent you some job posting. Uh, but here's like you, we have coaches to prepare our pitch, coaches to prepare our resume, coaches to prepare our LinkedIn profile, a lot of you know uh, leads on jobs, uh, jobs for like your specific industry or function, a search engine to search for specific jobs that are posted for Stanford students. So actually, uh, I I am gladly uh, surprised by how much they support us. And at the end, the GSP is aware that one of the metrics of their success is allocating us in a company or starting a company. So um, if you are wondering like, okay, is the GSB going to help you? Yes, it, it, it is going to help you. And uh, in my own experience, I got a great uh, job uh, experience during summer and actually last quarter another one because the, the GSB helped me through this process. So for me, what I use uh, for in terms of uh, in terms of recruiting and resources that Stanford has. Uh, it's called the Smith Program. And I wanted to work in a social business back in Brazil. And it, that they wouldn't be able to afford uh, the cost of my summer. So Stanford has this program where they would actually, uh, like the company would that I was working for, they would pay a part of my compensation and Stanford would pay the rest as a, some sort of scholarship. So for me, that was very important to make sure that I could do my summer back in something that was socially oriented, but also that I could be compensated accordingly. And that's one example. I know that there are other examples that Stanford has that actually uh, provides you with the opportunity of trying something new. You could be either in a startup or in the social sector uh, without the risk of taking a, a financial burden in that way. Yeah. And one last thing I just had on that that surprised me um, was a lot of times people think of going to business school and having the Career Management Center help you get your jobs. Mm -hmm. And it, it amazed me because of how cohesive and strong the Stanford network is that actually a lot of students do what are called self-source. So if, you, if there's a really interesting company that you're interested in, either in the U.S. or in Latin America, you'll send out an email to your classmates saying, does anyone have any connections to this company? And more often than not, you'll find that there's some random connection that someone has that used to work there, um, and then you start to have this dialogue. And I would say that both with regards to the yeah. summer internships and also with the full-time employment, um, the Career Management Center has been a great support, but you would be amazed at how many students actually do pursue uh, the Stanford brand yeah. and the network and mm -hmm. finding those. Um, so just wrap up uh, with one last final question. Um, I know we spoke before about some of the resources that uh, the, the LASA club that we have at the GSB, um, but it looks like some students are also curious um, at the GSB. <laughs> do Latin American students tend to kind of stay <laughs> together or do they mix throughout the class or a little bit of both? So what are your thoughts on that? Well, this is probably my own experience. Yeah. Uh, and I think probably this uh, changes every year. So I'm going to talk about our class and the, the people I know. 
Uh, I think it's a bit of both. I think uh, it is your choice if you want to mingle or not with internationals. Uh, I, I decided to do that. Uh, I came here and I said, okay, actually one friend gave me the advice, do not hang out only with Latin America. <laughs> because you're going to be like embedded into this bubble and you want to hang out with more people. You want to meet these amazing people that are from all over the world. So when I came to GSP, I actually participated in a bunch of premixes, those trips that we did before. Uh, and I met a lot of people, and then when I came to GSP, I forced myself to at least have, you know, uh, at least 50% of my time, you know, hanging out with uh, people from all over the world. And I think it worked pretty well. I, I have to confess, I have, you know, a close group of friends who are from South America, uh, but also I have a close yeah. group of friends who are from, you know, the U.S. and, like, create countries that I have never heard before, like, like Azerbaijan. Uh, <laughs> but it's, uh, it's actually it's great to have the option, so you are not forced. So you have all the international friends or not yeah. forced to have only Latin American friends, it is your call. Yeah. Uh, yeah, I so my take on that is I think every person has a different experience. So talking about my experience on this, I found the GSP community to be extremely open uh to all, all cultures. So I have American friends, I have Indian friend, friends, I have a really good Chinese friends. So I think it's like Michael is a good American friend. <laughs> so I think like overall the community is very open and you you can make friends like I didn't find any like difficulty like blending in into any sorts of groups. But having said that, uh I think it's at least for me, I connect uh, very much with Latin students. So most of my close friends, they are Brazilian and Mexican. And, but that's not to be said that the community is not open and you cannot be friends with anyone. It really is up to like you when you come like to the, the GSB, how you want to allocate your time and what kind of people do you want to be friends with. Okay. Great. Well, we're almost out of time today. So before we go, Luisa and Gabrielle, um, do you have any final words or advice for the uh, prospective students of the GSB? Sure. Um, well, my advice, if you have the chance, apply. You will never <laughs> regret that decision. Uh, two years at the GSB are like a privilege. Yeah. I think there's no one who, well, I'm, I'm talking about myself, but I, I, I do not regret the decision. It's been the best two years of my life. and. I think we need more Latinos here. Uh, I think we, <laughs> we need more leaders who are going to reshape the future yeah. of Latin America. So if you have the chance, please do it. Yeah. Um, I think for me, uh, I'm I am extremely grateful for my GSP experience. I think it has changed my life in many aspects. So I would encourage everyone to apply and definitely say good luck in the application process. But if I have to, like, if I if I was on your shoes now, I think the advice I'd like to hear is to really think through now when you're in the process of applying of what do you want to get out of the MBA. Uh, I think we mentioned a couple of times here, like how many options and how overwhelming the choices you have here are. So we really think through, like use the application process really as like, why do I want to do an MBA? Why, what am I going to get out of it? And that's really going to help you once you start your MBA to make the most out of it. Great. Well, thank you, Luis and Gabriel, for joining us and for all of you for participating. Um, if you'd like, you can meet an MBA admissions officer in person while they travel to many cities throughout Latin America from May to August of this year. Please keep an eye out for invitations to meet them or check the events page on the Sanford MBA website. Of course, you can also learn more about the MBA program and admissions requirements on the website. The application for the class starting in the fall of 2016 will be available in June. And finally, please take a moment to answer a few survey questions about your experience with us today. The survey should pop up once the webinar ends. Uh, thank you, good luck, and we'll see you soon. Suerte. <laughs>